One day, King Minos, the ruler of Crete, prayed to the sea god Poseidon for a special bull to sacrifice to Zeus, the highest Olympian god. Poseidon granted his wish, and a magnificent bull emerged from the ocean. King Minos was dazzled by the beauty of this amazing creature. King Minos decided not to sacrifice this bull and sacrificed another one instead. When Poseidon came to know about this, he punished Minos for his disobedience by making Pasiphae, the king's wife, fall in love with this animal. As a result, Pasiphae gave birth to the Minotaur, a monster with the head of a bull and the body of a man. Poseidon was still mad at the king, so he turned the bull mad so mad that fire was coming out of its nostrils. To the Minoans, bulls were sacred. It was against their religion to kill a bull. They tried to recapture it without harming it, but they did not succeed. The bull hid during the day. At night, it ripped destruction from one end of the island to the other. To capture this animal, master it, and bring it before Eurystheus was the seventh labor of Hercules. Task 7. The Cretan Bull Hercules arrived in Crete as instructed by Eurystheus. The beast was hiding in a forest at the far end of the island. When the bull saw Hercules, it was scared. He did not fight Hercules and bowed its head down. Hercules quickly grabbed its horn and climbed on top. So thoroughly did Hercules master the animal that he drove it back to King Eurystheus. Eurystheus saw that Hercules had succeeded in bringing back the Cretan bull. He planned to sacrifice the beast to his benefactor, the Greek goddess Hera. Hera hated Hercules. She did not wish to receive a sacrifice because of the work of her husband's illegitimate son and refused the offering. Eurystheus had no other option than to set the bull free. When it was no longer under the management of Hercules, the bull became wild again and wandered in the city, destroying everything in its sight. It wandered around Greece, terrorizing the people, and ended up in Marathon, a city near Athens. At Marathon, the bull stopped its wandering and instead caused damage to property and people, just as it had done in Crete, and later acquired the name Marathonian Bull. Later, Theseus, son of the king of Athens, Aegeus, set forth to capture the bull. He went to Marathon and indeed successfully caught it. He then returned to Athens, where he sacrificed it to Athena or Apollo. Theseus would of course later travel to Crete, where he killed the offspring of the Cretan bull, the Minotaur, killing it inside the labyrinth near the palace of King Minos. The fourth labor of Hercules was to bring the wild boar of Erymanthus back to the castle alive. This time, Eurystheus was sure that Hercules would get killed while trying to capture the boar. 
Task 4. Eromanthian Boar This one was called the Eromanthian Boar because it lived on a mountain called Eromanthus. This pig was huge, wild, and with a bad temper and tusks growing out of its mouth. Every day, the boar would come crashing down from his lair on the mountain, attacking men and children. It wasn't too hard for Hercules to find the boar. He could hear the beast snorting and stomping as it rooted around for something to eat. Hercules chased the boar round and round the mountain, shouting as loud as he could. The boar, frightened and out of breath, hid in a thicket. Hercules poked his spear into the thicket and drove the exhausted animal into a deep patch of snow. He chased the boar through the snowfield where it collapsed from exhaustion. He trapped it with a net, then bound its feet and propped it over his shoulder to carry back to Mycenae. King Eurystheus had not expected Hercules to complete the labor and was completely terrified when he saw the live boar snorting and squealing wildly. He quickly fled and hid in a half-buried bronze pythos, which was akin to a giant storage jar. He demanded that Hercules get rid of the boar before he dared to step out. Disgruntled, Hercules left the palace and took the boar with him. He couldn't understand why the king would set the task of bringing back the boar alive if he was afraid of it. King Eurystheus was ashamed now. Everyone had seen him hiding when Hercules brought the Eromanthian boar into the palace. He somehow had to get rid of Hercules now. He finally came up with the next task for Hercules, and it was to kill the Stymphalian birds. The Stymphalian birds were just plain nasty. The people in the area spent their days and nights hiding from these scary birds. The Stymphalian birds had pointed beaks and ripping claws, and their feathers were made of razor-sharp bronze. They were the stuff of nightmares. Task 5. Stymphalian Birds Arriving at the lake, which was deep in the woods, Hercules had no idea how to drive the huge gathering of birds away. Goddess Athena appeared before him and gave him a pair of bronze crotala. This was noise-making clappers similar to castanets. These were no ordinary castanets. This was created by Hephaestus, the god of blacksmiths. The castanets created tremendous sounds that would scare every living thing in the vicinity. Hercules thanked Athena and Hephaestus for their gift and started climbing a hill nearby. Once he reached the top, he began to furiously shake the rattle. The loud noise startled the birds and they flew out of the marsh into the open air. Hercules began to shoot as many as he could with his poisonous arrows. When the last bird fell, the people hiding inside their huts and homes rushed outside and cheered. Hercules retrieved the birds he'd slain to bring back to King Eurystheus to prove that he had successfully completed his labor. And once again, Eurystheus was not happy. <laughs>